the first question was uh, how how did she become involved with documentary filmmaking, and then future plans. Um, I um, after I left my law firm, I went to work for ABC Television in New York, and first I went in house, and I was there for a year and a half, and then I got hired by my wonderful boss. Um, in the news division, and her job is uh, ethics and standards in news, um, which is not only saying you can't say shit, you know, on TV, but it, it was also the the fun part of the job was um, working with the investigative reporters and reading scripts and watching cuts, and that's what I did for six and a half, seven years. It, so I felt like that was really my film school because you see very quickly a good producer can make a three minute story or a 15 minute story or an hour long piece, um, they can all be equally affecting. And um, so I would see really great producers, I would read scripts and work with them. And then I went to A&E television, I did the same job, um, A&E's cable, and so a lot of that was working with History Channel and long form. And then, you know, so I had been doing that same kind of job for almost 10 years, and I was like, I could do this. <laughs> so it's kind of good that you don't know what you don't know. So um, I was mistakenly um, under the impression that it was easier than it was. Um, and then really what happened is I met the public defenders, and I was like, I will not give up. Like, so I made a lot of mistakes, and I did a lot of stupid stuff. and. Um, but ultimately, it was. I actually wanted to answer the question that you posed, which is, why would anybody do this job, and why should I care? You know, like I'm not a knucklehead, and my kids are not knuckleheads, and they're not doing wrong. Um, and then I just saw so many people gathered up into the system. I just was really like, I'll be damned if I'm going to give up. And so that's that's what happened. And then so. Uh Future so plans. next is uh, working on the new Jim Crow uh, as a documentary film, and also um, filming right now um, in the South in some of the abortion clinics that um, are being targeted for closing. And I have this wonderful African American doctor who lives in Chicago, and he flies to Alabama on his days off, and he does abortions because no one in Mississippi or Alabama will do them. There's one abortion clinic open in the state of Mississippi. In the whole state, there's just one. In Alabama, there are five, and three of them will close. In Texas, there are more, but a third of them closed last Friday because of the court's decision. So across the country, and the people who are most affected by the closing of the clinics are poor black women, because if they don't have insurance and they don't have anywhere else to go. So it is a story about race and access to health care, and I'm, I'm very committed to working on that. So as my mother says, just one more fun topic after another. <laughs> <laughs>